maybe the word you memorized, you memorized it as a meaning that is not very common. It does have that meaning, but it's not extremely common. And you're not memorizing it with its most common meaning. Okay, well, that's actually a problem. When it comes to memorization, memorizing English words, a couple things. Number one, you need to know why you're doing it and what role it plays, right? Because memorizing things does not solve all your problems. It won't make you automatically a great English speaker, but it can be helpful. We're going to talk about a specific type of memorization that is scientifically proven to work well. Now, there are a couple of very effective memory techniques, memorization techniques. For example, you may have heard of memory palace. You may have heard of the major system for numbers. Right? There are a lot of different, uh, different systems. And one of them is spaced repetition. So we're going to talk about how it works. We're going to talk about how you can use it to memorize English words, but then how you can make sure that you're not just memorizing things and then you can't use what you learn. Because just memorizing randomly and not being able to use what you memorize is useless, right? Because English is a language. You need to be able to communicate in the language. Correct? Correct. Then I'm going to give you a challenge that you can do to actually get started with this. Okay, so a little bit of context, a little bit of background here. There was a guy once upon a time named Herman Ebbinghaus, and he did an experiment on memory. And his experiment, which was published in a paper in 1885, showed that there is a pretty rapid decrease in what we can remember if we just try to hold something in mind once. We try to memorize something, maybe that's a word, for example, maybe it's an idiom if we're talking about English. Then pretty quickly, there's a big drop after 20 minutes, there's an, a drop after an hour, nine hours, and then by you know day 31, it's essentially close to gone. Okay, now what can we do with that? Right, we have this sort of this sort of rapid decrease in in memory when we just have something in our minds, in our short-term memory. What can we do about it? So we have the forgetting curve that he established. What we learn from that is that if as the memory is sort of fading, it gets popped back up again. We remind ourselves of that, of that thing again. And as that starts to fade, it pops up again. We remind ourselves that of that thing again. And if it starts to fade again, we do it another time. After a few times, it starts to stick in long-term memory. Now, this is called spaced repetition because of how this works. There is a frequency which increases over time. And there are different apps that you can use to memorize things with spaced repetition. Probably the most famous is Anki. That's a very famous, uh, famous way to, to do it. It's a very well-known, rather, way to, right, way to do it. So you can see here, with this curve, time remembered over a five-day period, you can see that the curve is shallower each time that the thing that was forgotten comes back up. That is not necessarily to say it always has to be a specific number of days, right? It can be over a shorter duration as well. But the idea is the same. As we start to forget, it comes back up. It is resurfaced, for example, in a flashcard. And then as that one starts to fade, it comes back up again. And gradually, the curve is so shallow that it's just there in your brain. So it's very cool. And that is pretty, pretty well established in literature, right? That this actually works as a technique. So we have to be clear, though, when it comes to English learning, what it does and what it doesn't do. What does spaced repetition do? It is a technique, very simply, for taking something you don't know, 
usually something small like a word or a phrase, and making it stick in your brain. That's what it is. It's not really anything else, right? It's a great way to memorize something. But then there's a problem. When it comes to language, we need to use what we learn. We need to communicate with language, right? You learn stuff that you can, so that you can speak with it or write with it or whatever. And you want to be able to use what you learn when you're speaking, when you're writing, when you're communicating. So it's important to then know what it's not for. It's not for that part. So once you've really memorized something and it's in your brain, you then need to fit it into the language that you use. And that means learning in context. That means when you learn something new, you, you need to make sure you know where it was used, right? You need to know the context of its usage, then you memorize it, and then you, when you start to use it in your daily life or in your writing, you are continuously thinking about the correct context. Not just this thing by itself in space, but a thing in a context, in a sentence, right? That's very, very important. You have to be able to use what you learn. The other part of this is about different meanings, for example, of words and phrases. Phrasal verbs famously have multiple meanings. Words have multiple meanings, right? So you need to be aware of that too. Great, you've memorized the word, but maybe the word you memorized, you memorized it as a meaning that is not very common. It does have that meaning, but it's not extremely common. And you're not memorizing it with its most common meaning. Okay, well, that's actually a problem. So make sure when you're going through that process, you're a attaching the meanings that you will actually use and not meanings that you will never use or nobody uses. That's a very common issue as well. So there I would always recommend when you're first learning a word, look up the context. Look it up in the free dictionary. Read the different meanings, the different senses of the word. Look at it in a few different examples and make sure you understand the different uses, the different meanings of it so that you really understand it so that when you memorize it and when you start using it, you can use it naturally. That's really important. So space repetition is great at helping you remember a thing, not so great at helping you know how to use that thing that you remembered naturally. So those two things, right, those two processes need to go hand in hand, right? And you need to always be keeping that in mind when you're memorizing words, phrases, whatever. So challenge, try to remember 10 words per day for the next seven days. For the next seven days, 10 words. That's 70 words. That's a lot. Go through this other process too of making sure that you know it in context, you know how it's used, you know its different meanings, right? Write sentences for each meaning. As you're memorizing this word, write sentences for each meaning. You can use whatever app you want, whatever uh, system you want, I don't really care. Find one, just search spaced repetition app or spaced repetition program and you'll find something. Then wait a week and then write new sentences. See if you can still access those words or phrases. If it's just words, great. See if you can access the meaning and actually use it naturally. If you can, you'll know that you're doing it the right way. But you might see some weak areas. You might make some optimizations, some small tweaks, and that's fine too. The key thing is to make sure what you're doing is actually accomplishing what you want to accomplish. Great, now you know 70 words. My question, my next question, can you use those 70 words in a sentence? If you cannot naturally use those 70 words in sentences, I would consider you to have not really learned those words, okay? So just make sure that you're doing those things together and you're not just learning words and phrases in isolation, okay? If you have any questions, let me know. Share your word lists with me. I would love to see those. Don't forget to like and subscribe and also check out my full courses in the links in the description.